The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. And the first step on getting 1,000 sales on Etsy starts with what you consider before you even open up your Etsy shop in the first place. So let's talk about that. Hey, I'm Pam Duffy, and we're in the middle of a series on how to get to 1,000 sales on Etsy in 2019. If you haven't already, you wanna start off in this video, and don't forget, keep coming back for some more tips, tricks, and advice to take us on this journey from no sales to 1,000 sales in 2019 or whatever your goal for the year is. But for today, I want to talk about six steps that you need to consider before even opening your shop. And if you've already opened your shop, can I ask, did you think of these before you got started? Is this something that you've thought up at a later date? Or are some of these tips things that you're going to have to think about just now? Let me know in the comments down below if this is stuff you knew all along or stuff that you're only just figuring out as you go along. So the very first thing when you're considering opening your Etsy shop is to figure out what is your why? Why are you wanting to open a shop? Now, I'm going to get real with you. If your why is you desperately need money, like right now, and this looks like the easy way to do it, it's really, really unlikely that you're going to make a massive amount of money on Etsy, especially straight out the door. Some people do, but yeah, this is too big a risk. You don't want to be going with this. Etsy takes a bit of time to build up all the understanding and everything so that you totally are able to make a decent living. So if you're needing a proper full-time income just now, then I would seriously consider looking at getting some kind of other job and perhaps putting Etsy onto the side. Start up a shop just now and build it up slowly, but don't look at this as your only source of income right now. Point to think about when opening opening up your shop, number two is to find that niche. What is it that you're going to sell? The more focused your aim is, the better you're going to do. If you're a creative person, you might have ideas of 40 different things that you can make, but narrow it down into one specific niche. It doesn't have to be identical things, but make sure that they at least have something in common, binding them together. Whether you have paper crafts or scrapbooking supplies or focusing in on a certain animal or an age group, anything like that. But what we don't want to have is cards and jumpers and drawings and all sorts of things so that when people find your shop, they're not really sure what you're all on what you're on about. Find one focused idea that's going to target one target audience, which we'll talk about later. Thing to think about number three is what is your passion? As we said, your target audience, this is the people that you're going to be targeting to buy your stuff. Now, it's easier to target an audience if this is something you have a passion for. For instance, I love dogs. I have pet dogs. I hang around on dog forums. I'm friends with dog people. So it made sense for me to say my initial target is for dog lovers. Now, I make small sculptures of any animals, but rather than say any animals altogether, my my passion is dogs. It would be disingenuous for me to join a cat forum and want to talk to people about cats because I would be just there for selling things and people would notice that, people would realise that. However, when I'm on a dog forum and I'm chatting 90% of my time just chatting about dog stuff, then people get to know, like, trust me. And if occasionally I advertise my wares, then that's a much better way of doing things. So I have my passion and I find a way to monetize my passion without spamming people. Thing to think about number four, how much do you actually need to make? Now, I know we said if you urgently need to make a living right now, then it's possibly not the time to do this. But we also want to find out if it's going to be worth your while. Your niche that you're aiming for and the thing that you want to make, figure out if it's actually going to be worth your while by doing some research on other people who sell similar products to you. Figure out how long it takes to make the thing that you make and ask yourself, am I actually going to be able to make a kind of hourly wage from making this thing? Certain things, if you're looking to make a business of 
your Etsy shop, if you're looking to make a thousand sales, this is a lot of work. So you don't want to be giving away your time for nothing. So there's certain things like creating cross stitches and tapestries. These are beautiful, but unless you're very lucky, you're unlikely to make a decent hourly wage for it because people just aren't going to pay for all your time. So look at things that you do that you love, but that have the chance to be monetized to a level that you're going to make a decent hourly wage. Thing to think about number five, is the laws in your area? What are the laws for you setting up as a small business, as a small online shop on Etsy? Do you need to have separate business accounts? Do you need to register for a tax? Do you need an accountant? Look at all these things and see what's specific to your area. I'll tell you, in the UK, we don't need to have a separate bank account just as long as you keep notes of all the money that's going in and out. You don't have to have an accountant, but it can't hurt if you don't really know what you're doing with taxes. And you don't need to register with the tax office until you make a thousand pounds in a year. So these are important things to know. And if you're not in the UK, if you can let me know in the comments down below. What are the rules in your country? Do you need a business bank account? Do you need an accountant? Do you need to register for tax? What are the laws where you are? And the final idea to think about number six is can you create a range? Now, I don't want you to procrastinate not opening a shop because you don't have enough things, but you want to have a few to get you off the bat, to get you up and running to start with. And think how you can focus them together into a range. You have your niche, but let's do a real sub-niche, a real focus thing. Like I spoke about before, when we opened Mum's shop at the beginning of 2018, what we did with her was... She, she was doing pictures and cards with all paper craft things but we looked in on we focused strongly on Scottish things and more strongly on things in Harris Tweed and stags so there was lots of Harris Tweed pictures lots of stags lots of stags in Harris Tweed so when she started we were able to list s several items every day on that niche so we had a series of things so if you can create a few similar items to get you off the bat so i hope that's given you something to think about don't forget to keep coming back if you're looking for all the steps to get your shop from not even open to a thousand sales in one year thank you so much for joining me